Hello and welcome to Frozen Synapse Live. Uh, today I'll be covering several matches that have been sent to me, um, but sadly I don't have a co-caster for today. Um, in total there are 13 w matches I'll be uh, commentating on, and therefore a lot of different players, both newer players and very experienced players. Uh, I'll be doing the matches in chronological order, starting from around about 300,000 to 340,000. And first up is game number 304512, which is between Worm and Hax. Uh, you can now in the moment see the match on screen. Uh, in this match there are not balanced teams. Uh, there's a machine gunner and a grenade launcher and a sniper versus a shotgunner, a sniper and a machine gunner. These teams aren't particularly unbalanced as uh, the shotgunner makes up for the grenade launcher and vice versa. Uh, of course they can be very useful depending on the situation, but there are very few maps where they're not useful whatsoever. So on this map I don't expect to see the snipers doing too much since there aren't all that many open spaces. And But the shotgunner looks like it has a nice path along the top here and the grenade launcher has the ability to lock down a lot of space so that will make it hard for hacks to actually reach the bid line uh, it might be somewhat of an aggressive bid here uh, so it will be hard to actually get there but it's not extremely aggressive so let's just get on with the very first turn uh, Worm sets up a nice defensive position He's got the upper part of the line covered and much of the lower part as well due to the open space there. And Hex advances towards the line except with his sniper. And he's got both his MG and his shotgunner in pretty nice positions. With his MG it looks like he uh, removed his ignore order maybe a bit early but due to the table here uh, I don't think he was in much danger there. Uh, onwards to turn 2. Hax makes some progress but then gets taken out by a gr well placed grenade. He made a bit too obvious a move. And he also manages to lose his sniper up there. He does still have his MG but he's now down to 1 versus 3 enemies, so victory will now be quite difficult and thus quite unlikely. I expect Worm to win now unless he makes some big mistake here. Uh, Hex actually pulls a bit backwards to try um, to attack from some side Worm hasn't seen. Actually a pretty smart tactic, but I think he got spotted at the end here, so he does not have the advantage of surprise. So almost to next turn, he tries advancing and through some good ducking and movement, he actually manages to get all the way down there and he kills the s sniper. And at this point it will actually be very hard for Worm to get Hax out of his position so due to that well due to that clever move it's actually quite possible for Hax to win now unlike how it was looking just one turn ago and he survives through turn 5 I don't like his position or well I don't think he really needed to go that far, but of course he would be at... There is of course the risk of the grenade launcher there. Uh, I don't think the grenade launcher can actually fire in time now to 
actually get a kill now, so unless that grenade hits him, the grenade launcher will now be useless. So it's up to this last machine gunner here to win the match for Worm. And it doesn't. So that was a very well played second to last turn there by Hax and the turn before. And it changed the entire outcome of the game. Um, our next game is 304697. And it's once again one of Hax's games, and it's versus Wari. Uh, for those who don't know, Wari is a pretty experienced player, not among the very best, but good. Uh, I don't think I've actually played him. I've seen several of his matches. He he's occasionally active on IRC, but I don't think he's actually been on lately. But he's an experienced player, so this should also be interesting. Uh, for teams here, I say Wari has the favor as he's got the grenade launcher instead of a sniper on Hax's part. And the grenade launcher is can be very effic effective in secure, of course, as uh, it has the ability to hit a large area and it makes it both hard to defend and to attack depending on what positions you have. So it would take a lot of effort here I think for Hax to actually win but he might pull through since he actually sent me this game specifically it really wouldn't surprise me if he won this. And nice small distraction there on Hax's part he was planning planning in case uh, Wari expanded on, uh, uh, um, in case Wari attacked from the top here, then that distraction would have kept the unit occupied while the sniper killed it. And his starting position is pretty good, it covers the bottom area here and the top area here, while not being at much risk from the bottom. Wari's attack is also quite logical really, he's got his grenade pretty far forward so he's not got a large firing range and he's advancing somewhat quickly. It's this MG here I'd say is a bit too far away at the moment, should probably be closer but he's still got a lot of turns to get into the zone. His grenade was Kind of useless as uh, hacks moving at that point was pretty obvious as any experienced player would move away from such an obvious position when threatened by a grenade. Um, yeah, Worry doesn't actually advance much with this MG here, but it's in a nice position. Hacks can't do much against it. Uh, this bottom MG is now closer to where it should be, so War still has the advantage, I'd say, but it's quite possible Hax will manage to turn this around. Uh, that grenade was pretty smart, really, but not quite there. Uh, Hax made a very nice evasive maneuver there. He stepped in front there and stepped back. No, he waited till just after a grenade would hit. So that was a very nice move there. Um, War is still isn't advancing, and I'd say he's playing this game too passively now, and that really hurts his chance of victory. And he actually manages to kill one of his own MGs with a grenade, so that was really not a good move. And he is now down to 2 units versus 3, and losses thus very likely. And as expected, he loses both his remaining units and thus loses the game. So, well played by Hax, few mistakes by Wari. 
had Worry not made those mistakes, the game might have ended quite differently. Next up is 305974 and it's between Sinroth and Total Warmage. Both very experienced players and good players and they've both been in the DGLs several times. And this is disputed and the teams are balanced both with two MGs and a shotgunner. Uh, there's quite a bit of cover up here and quite a few buildings down here which should help make this match interesting. Yeah, for the start both do pretty standard moves getting into good positions. Sinroth is keeping one of his MGs a bit far back but it could do well, who knows. Um, Total Warmage has a very wide position. This can be useful in Disputed, though it does also carry the risk of single units being killed as they are isolated from the rest of the group. And Total Warmage loses an MG down there due to. Hmm. I'm actually not quite sure why he lost that engagement, but I guess he miscalculated or something. Actually, it looks like he actually had it on ignore at that point, maybe? I'm not sure. Um, Onwards to turn 3, Total Warmish does get a pretty nice position with his remaining units. He has nice control over the right part here with his shotgunner, but most likely several boxes will be spawning on the left here as well, and those will be quite hard for him to grab. And that was a very nice move by Total Warmish there. With some nicely timed ducking, he managed to kill this MG with his shotgunner, and he didn't lose any units in the attempt either. And, well, the problem now for Total Warmage is this shotgunner down here. Had it been for that, he could easily grab three boxes here. So, there's no obvious victor yet, though I would say the advantage is probably a bit in total war merge favor due to the box spawns. Hmm. Both players go very defensively and neither player gets killed. Um, the favor is still the same as before I'd say and we'll just have to wait for someone to make a move. Sinroth does a bit of scouting. Pit uh, that's a pretty wise move and he now, he now knows where that MG up top is and by elimination roughly where the shotgunner must be. And Total Warmage finally moves a bit and gets a very nice kill on the MG. Uh, Sinrot should have pulled that a bit further back so that it could get killed by a m such a maneuver. And I think Total Warmage will almost certainly win now. And he grabs one of the boxes and for the very last turn here, kills the shotgunner. Uh, uh, so very nice play by Total Warmer here. Sinrot should have been a bit more careful with his units. And our next game is 306054, and it's between once again Total Warmage and Mantis. Mantis is also a pretty experienced player. Haven't seen him much around lately, but as far as I know, he's pretty good. Uh, some interesting teams there with three shotgunners and an MG on Total Warmage team with and. 3 MGs and a shotgunner on Mantis 
team. This is probably in Total Warmer's favor and he's taking a very aggressive approach here, which his team is very well suited for. Uh, Mantis does have the advantage of having a bunch of cover back here, so it will still be pretty hard for Total Warmer's to get to the line. I'd say Mantis has a bit too defensive position with this MG over here, he should probably put that further ahead. Uh, so that would reduce kill times a lot, which could make a decisive uh, difference. This shotgunner position is uh, pretty smart really, uh, so that prevents any uh, attacks in through that door there, and that room would probably be almost impossible to defend with an MG. Uh, Total Warmers is taking nice aggressive approach here, and we'll see in the next few turns how this game will turn out. And very nice advance on Total Warmers part there, is some ducking, uh, yeah, quite a bit of ducking involved has to not get killed and he now has basically all his units right up by the line and he's of course gone past the line with a unit down here. Uh, so the odds are now very much against Mantis so let's just see if he managed to pull it around. Still no kills on Mantis part while Total Warmish took out the shotgunner and he's now got this room very nicely defended and I really doubt Mantis can win now as all of Total Warmish units are across the line and these two should not should be almost impossible to, to dislodge as well as this bottom one he would have to use distractions and he simply doesn't have the units to kill that many enemies he does take out this shotgunner but he also loses an MG at the top there, and he's now basically lost the match. He does make one last ditch attempt at dislodging, as he always should. I mean, just giving up is pointless when you still have a tiny, tiny chance of your opponent having, having messed up something somehow. I mean, I haven't won many games that way, but I have won some simply due to my opponent making some ridiculous error, and I have also lost games for the very same reason. So, um, our fifth game is 3 1 3, and it's between Puji and Worm. And it's disputed. Ah, Verm definitely has the worst team here with two snipers and two MGs as compared to Puji's one grenade launcher, two MGs and a shotgunner. The snipers, as you probably already know, simply do not have the mobility needed to excel in Disputed, while shotgunners very much so, and the grenade launchers have the ability to deny large areas, which is very useful in Disputed. I would also say the map is a bit in the favor of Puji here due to the cover on his side, and I think it will be easier for him to control the center due to how the map is laid out. And both players fan out to cover as much area as possible. This bottom sniper, well the snipers aren't really useful yet, but I guess it could work as some sort of surprise later. And the shotgunner has control over the center, so that's a very nice position there. And lots of scouting is done. He does get a kill, but then gets killed 
by his own grenade as well he stopped for there for that kill so he didn't get out of range in time still that still uh, worm is now down to a single mobile unit while Puji has three so even though shotgunners are extremely useful I'd say that exchange is to Puji's favor as once the box spawns it will be very hard for Worm to actually grab them and Puji takes out one of the snipers so it's now 3 versus 2 and it's now even more so more in Puji's favor and he takes out both of Worm's remaining units with some nice grenade and MG action so very nicely played by Puji here he did have the advantage from the very start though so even without that good play uh, he would probably still have won but still uh, our next game is the same as the first one plus two it's once again between Puji and Worm and it's light secure this time around the teams are balanced with both players having two MG's and a sniper um, I can't uh, can't say I like this bid here all that much but it does look like it's pretty defensible it's probably larger than reasonable though And uh, nothing much happens on the first turn. Worm sets up a nice defensive position here while Puji advances on the area. And uh, for next turn, bit of distraction going on there actually, with Puji getting two kills while Worm only got one. And uh, that exchange is of course very much to Worm's benefits. Uh, no Puja's benefit of course and he's now basically won the game as he can simply use a bit of a distraction to make it impossible for that MG to take out that MG and Puja thus wins the game And next up, the final game between Puji and Worm. This, all these three were from some round in DGL3, and this is the charge. And here we've got two MGs and a shotgunner versus three MGs. Um, shotgunner is of course a benefit and. This bid here by Puji is quite reasonable based on the map here with this wall here acting as a natural boundary for his bid. And both players advance onwards to to some quite good positions. Puj is concentrating heavily towards this building here. Could work out pretty well, but it could also potentially backfire. And total warmers, just for your information, it's not Saturday today. Anyway, Puj makes a nice move here taking out two mgs and <laughs> he's basically won the match now really that was quite early so let's just watch the last turn see if worm attempts to do anything Hostile. 
and he gets killed by the shotgunner. <coughs> Not particularly surprising that. Uh, I really have to get some water. Be right back. And I'm back again. Uh, let's go on to the next match. Um, the next match up is let me just find out. Uh, three, two, nine, six, one, three. Oh, and apparently I've gotten that sent to me twice, so we only have twelve matches for today, not thirteen. Sorry. And this is between Total Warmers and Wonder Hero. Wonder Hero, as you probably know is one of the top ranked players in the game and Total Warmish is no bad player himself either. So this is a charge. Um, teams are pretty balanced here. Both have rocket launchers, both have MGs, but one here has a grenade launcher, while Total Warmish has a shotgunner. And as I mentioned earlier, they're usually roughly equal. Um, surprises me a little bit that Total Warmish didn't with bid one step further here, as this wall acts as kind of a natural boundary, though of course then he would also probably be a bit vulnerable to rockets to the wall here if Wonder Hero kept the wall there on purpose and that's also probably the reason why Wonder Hero didn't bid one step further so let's just watch the first turn here both players send out a rocket, neither player getting a kill but so the Wormish is a bit clever and opens a way for his uh, shotgunner to go. And um, yeah, not much else to say here really. And um, so the Wormish is still using his rocket launchers to get his shotgunner further. It's quite a clever tactic really, but using it more than maybe twice. It generally is pushing it as then it becomes pretty predictable but using it once or twice like Total Warmish has done so far can work very well as a surprise tactic or just to increase your mobility and Total Warmish gets his shotgunner across the line and kills this MG over here and Wonder Hero now has absolutely no direct fire units and it will thus be almost impossible for him to win this match. Though the grenade launcher can still be a big threat, the rocket launcher will be very easy to avoid. Clever grenade there by Wonder Hero barely takes out this shotgunner here. Thus making a bit more in Wonder Hero's favor, but Total Wormish still has the advantage. And no more deaths this turn, and with the current positions, I'd say Wonder Hero has probably lost the match now. And unsurprisingly, he wins. Um, next up, we've got 333760. And this time it's Quester against Wonder Hero. 
I have absolutely no idea what, who Quester is, so I guess he's just some random player wonder who met through the matchmaker. And it's a um, game type we very seldom see on Frozen Silence Live, that is Dark Extermination. The reason why it's so rarely seen here is because it's not considered as competitive uh, game mode as it has much less of a clearly defined goal and it's very open to things like camping and like other game game modes. <laughs> Interesting to note here is that it looks like this grenade launcher might be trapped actually. Uh, but no, it probably has just enough space to actually get out there. Still, that's a pretty interesting starting position. Mm, the teams are balanced, but the spawns are not necessarily so. I mean, this grenade launcher here, for example, is very much not useful right now, as all it can do is maybe deny a bit of area up here or something. Well, this grenade launcher could potentially get the kill here. So uh, let's just watch the first turn. Hmm. Interesting that Questor actually fires down there with his grenade. As I don't think there is any way Wonder Hero could have been that far down by the time it exploded. Uh. Questar does get a kill on the shotgunner though. So the advantage is now in Questar's favor. And almost to turn 2. No one gets any kills. And Questar is a nice, relatively gathered position at the center here. So he should have an easy time defending now. And it's basically up to Wonder here to try to dislodge him now, as Questor can just wait it out if he feels like it, which is one of the problems, of course, with extermination. And true, a uh, bit of a silly move there by Questor, he loses his grenade launcher. And the score is now down to 3-3, so it would be a draw if it stayed like this. And nicely placed grenade there by Wonder Hero takes out Questar's MG, so it's now down to two shotgunners. And the advantage is now in Wonder Hero's favor. Uh, Questor here might be able to kill both of these two units if he plays well now, and if he does so, he has probably won the game. And very nice distraction by Wonder Hero there, keeping the shotgunner occupied for long enough to get killed by the grenade. And up here it looks like the shotgunner might be losing, or it might get away on time, we'll see that very next turn. And it dies, so very nice turn around on Wonder Hero's part there. So very nicely played as usual by Wonder Hero. Uh, next up, 3, 4, 6, 2, 4, 1. And uh, this is Wonder Hero versus Neophilus. And I probably pronounced that nick wrong. Um, Wonder Hero here has two MGs and two shotgunners versus two MGs, a rocket launcher and a grenade launcher. Neophilus has a lot of utility here, but Wonder Hero has a lot of m mobility, so this should be interesting. I don't think the first rocket there by Neophilus made all that much sense. 
as the chance of it actually killing anything was quite low. However, the rest of his unit setup on this first turn seems quite reasonable. And a little firefight starts here. I don't think either player will get any losses from it, but of course I'm not certain. And bit of explosive action going on there and at the top here Neofellus loses an MG to, to, to some distraction on Wonder Hero's part um, nice rocket there though by Neofellus so he might still win but with this shotgunner down here his chances aren't too great. <laughs> What's surprising is that this MG actually survived down there. It it seems it just got out of the line of sight in time and the grin and the rocket launcher then died to the grenade and what's going up on up here? Ah, interesting move here by which they are now facing each other but rocket launcher is going to be dead in a very short moment or what the hell is going on here <laughs> I have no idea what just happened up there Uh, it seems turning around all that much basically meant Wonder Hero couldn't kill the rocket launcher on time. Uh, that's the first time I've ever seen anything like that happen. And that has to be one of the most ridiculous moves I've ever seen. <laughs> but also brilliant. And that's the problem of sending what forms into war. They're quite stupid on their own. Um hmm. Ah no, I think I typed that wrong maybe. And another one versus Nelfares. Charge once again, actually. And Wonder here has 3 MGs and a sniper versus 1 MG, 2 grenade launchers and a sniper. Um, I'm actually not sure which team is best in this situation. It might actually be quite balanced due to Neofelis' lack of direct fire while Wonder Hero lacks explosives. But we'll see. And. Both players have some quite reasonable sit positions. Wonder Hero does stay a bit defensive with this sniper there, but due to all the buildings in the way, it probably wouldn't be of much use in a uh, position further ahead. Nice grenade up there, takes down one MG. But Wonder Hero does manage to avoid this grenade here. Hmm. It will still probably be a bit hard for Neofelis to actually advance to the line here. As Wonder Hero has a pretty nice position down there and a very uh, hard to expect position. And to my knowledge, Neofelis currently doesn't really have any idea where those MGs are situated. And yeah, his his grenades reflect that very well, as they're far from where those MGs were. And and Wonder Hero gets a kill on an MG up there, but since his MGs are now stuck over there, 
it might be quite easy for Neophilus to advance and get to the line. But one of you tries to counter this, doesn't actually get a kill on the sniper there, but he doesn't know where it is now. And it survives into the room, and some nice moves by Neophilus there keeps the sniper alive. He does, however, lose his top grenade launcher. And it's quite possible Neophilus will win now. It really depends on what he and Wonder Hero does. If, if Neophilus is clever enough with his maneuvering, he will win now. And if one of you manages to counter all that, he will win. So let's just see. Oh, and in the very last second, Neophilus units get killed, and it's thus a victory for Wonder Hero. Ah, sorry, that's wrong turn. Um, he first gets sniped on the sniper there. Had it ducked slightly earlier, I think it would have survived. Uh, but as to the grenade launcher, I don't think there's all that much it could have done there at that point. Still, very nice moves by both players there, and a very close match. And... Hmm, I'm wondering if that's the right match number, I'll just have to check that. Um. Yeah, that is the right match number it seems, so this is the very last match and it's one hero versus Landia Brande. Um. Yeah, uh, balance team, sniper MG and shotgunner. Hmm. So let's just watch this turn here. And Landy Brandy gets his sniper kill there. I guess the game had already decided that Wonder Hero would win in that kind of situation where both players have an equal advantage and it was sniper versus sniper so that's something Landy Brandy should have simulated and should have seen coming and thus he should not have lost that sniper uh, let's just go on to the next turn and Wonder Hero lo loses his shotgun and it actually puts him at a disadvantage now, but it looks like he's getting a kill here on this MG, which would even it all out. And so he does. And Landibrand is now down to a single shotgunner. And one who keeps slowly advancing but he's now going to lose his sniper but he's opened up the top here for an advance with his MG which is exactly what he does and I think he's probably won now but I'm not sure yet so let's just watch the last turn here and a very nice distraction there keeps Landy Brandy far enough away that Wonder Hero wins the match and that folks was the very last match I had to show you all so um, thank you very much for watching and see you all on Saturday when I'll be covering DGL number 2 if that's finished it should have by now let me just check that um, Yeah, the DJL number 2 has finished, so that will be shown on Saturday. Hopefully I'll get a co-caster, so thank you all for watching, and 